Firstly, let me say thank you to everyone that has subscribed to Head Squeeze. There are now 250,000 of you. And so we're celebrating with a whole series of videos. So make sure you pack your electric fan because we're gonna go on a journey 250,000 times hotter than the sun. Now, you might know that the sun's core is pretty hot. In fact, that's a massive understatement. It's 15 million degrees C. So that electric fan isn't gonna cut it to keep you cool because you're just gonna be vaporized. In fact, all matter is ionized at that temperature. It has to be that hot because otherwise the hydrogen atoms wouldn't be able to overcome their repulsion due to their positive charges and be able to fuse together, which is what makes the sun a star. But the temperatures inside the sun pale in comparison to the temperatures we've managed to reach in the lab. Last year, a temperature 250,000 times that of the sun's core was reached in the relativistic heavy ion collider at Brookhaven National Lab in the US. That's a particle accelerator very much like the LHC that Tom Winty is always going on about. Except whereas he normally cares about protons hitting one another at close to the speed of light, the guys at the RHIC were using gold ions. So less cash for gold and more smash the gold. Sorry. Now, the scientists obviously didn't measure this colossal temperature using a thermometer. Instead, they looked at the light that was being emitted and the distribution of energy, or colors, essentially. Now, if you think of a red hot poker or lava, that glowing color tells you you don't want to touch it, unless you want to experience searing pain. In fact, it's actually really easy to work out what colors should be emitted from an object of a given temperature. Max Planck worked it out in 1901 and it forms one of the first bits of quantum theory. Now, temperatures of four trillion degrees C are uncommon now, to say the least, but they would have been the norm in the first 10 millionths of a second after the Big Bang. At those temperatures, the protons and neutrons that usually make up the nuclei of atoms haven't even formed yet, and it's thought that matter would have been in the form of a quark gluon plasma. Quarks are the stuff that make up protons and neutrons, and gluons are the force particles that stick them together. That's how they get their name. Now, this state has only been theorized so far, so did the guys at the RHIC manage to create the first artificial quark gluon plasma? The answer to that question is yes, but it wasn't anything like what the theorists were expecting, which makes the result even more exciting. They thought that the Clark gluon plasma at those temperatures would be almost like a gas with very weak interactions between all the particles. What was actually observed in the RHIC though was something much more like a liquid, able to freely flow with strong interactions. In fact, this liquid was almost perfect because it has very little viscosity and a measure of sort of resistance to being sloshed around and thickness, so to speak. In fact, this perfect liquid has even less viscosity than superfluids like liquid helium. It's thought that as temperatures get even hotter, that this quark gluon perfect liquid will slowly evolve into something more like a gas. But this hasn't been seen yet, even though the LHC has managed to smash the RHIC's record and hit 5.5 trillion degrees C using lead ions. So it really does seem that the quark gluon plasma is, and I'm sorry for this, a hot topic. <laughs>